What's up, sons? It's Blindrod with Son of a Tech once again, and I keep getting a ton of questions about why am I not getting the same Cinebench score on my Ryzen processor as you or other tech tubers that I've seen. And it always comes down to the same thing, that's memory. So I'm gonna talk about Ryzen and the memory you should be purchasing with your Ryzen processor to get peak performance, so stick around. Welcome back. So every company, when they release a product, is going to want to put their best foot forward. One of the ways that AMD has done this in recent history is going ahead and shipping reviewers kits with the memory of their choice to various tech tubers and so on. Unfortunately, what this means is that they leave out an entire purchasing decision that you need to make when you're taking a look at purchasing a Ryzen processor. Unlike the days of the past, even with AMD on the FX series, the memory speed actually directly relates to the processing power of that CPU. And with the new Ryzen processors, it affects it that much more thanks to the Infinity Fabric. For more on the Infinity Fabric and how it works, I'll leave some links in the description below. All of that being said, I'm going to go through about three things you should be taking a look at before building your next Ryzen system in regards to memory or RAM. So the first thing is going to be that you should be purchasing a stick of memory or memory in general that is on the AMD supported memory website. This list will be linked in the description below and regardless of what anybody tells you what memory may or may not work, if it's not on this list, just don't buy it. You're not going to find the support that you need if it doesn't work and it's just not worth the hassle. Even if you're going to save a couple bucks on it, at the end of the day, it's really not worth it. The next thing that you need to take into consideration is single rank versus dual rank. Infinity Fabric is very dependent on dual rank memory or dual channel memory. What that means is essentially you have two sticks instead of one stick. So if you're looking at memory and you have two 8 gig kits and one has one stick in it, that's eight gigabytes and the other has two sticks in it that are four gigabytes each, you will want to purchase the four gigabyte sticks in two, so in dual channel. This is once again, something that people seem to be missing here and why it needs to be clarified very clearly. Even though I understand from an upgradability perspective, you say, okay, well now I have three more slots to add three more sticks of eight gig gigs of RAM. Unless you're going directly for 16 gigs in dual channel, you will always want to get the two four gig sticks because this will significantly improve the performance on Ryzen in particular. This is very important. I can't overstate it. The next thing is when we are talking about the kits that the reviewers are getting, the big thing that they're getting here is typically the G skill flare X in recent history, and they're getting 3,200 megahertz. They're getting two sticks of eight gig sticks at CAS latency 14 at 3,200 megahertz. Both of these things that I just stated are numbers. However, they are numbers that are very important. The first one that we're going to talk about is the memory speed. Now with Ryzen in particular, unlike Intel where the performance improvements above 2666 doesn't really matter, Ryzen scales very well. This is both a blessing and a curse because in, on one hand, you're going to have to buy better memory to get the max performance or more expensive memory to get the max performance. but on the other hand here, you are actually going to have the option of scaling the performance up provided faster memory starts releasing. Now a couple things to keep in mind here is that even though they say the sweet spot's at about 29,000 megahertz, the thing is, is you're actually going to want to probably find something around the 3200 megahertz range because in most cases the 2900 is going to cause some a potential for you to need to have a little bit more understanding of the timings and overclocking. There's really no comparison to getting some Samsung B-Di 3200 megahertz at CAS latency 14, but that's going to cost you a pretty penny. So what I would recommend is nothing lower than 2666 megahertz. And if you expect the speeds of what you're seeing reviewers get, then you really do need to pick up the 3200 megahertz kit. Now, the second part to that is the latency, and the latency are going to be CAS latency 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, for example. The higher the number, the worse. The lower the number, the better, because that means the timings are 
tighter. Because the timings are tighter, the memory is going to perform better, and therefore your processor, due to the Infinity Fabric on the Ryzen architecture, will then perform better. So peak performance is going to be 3200 MHz at 14 CAS latency, provided peak performance to you is what the reviewers are showing, of course, on their videos. That's how you're going to get the best performing memory for your situation when building a Ryzen system. There is another caveat here or another catch that you need to consider, and that's going to be the motherboard compatibility with the memory you decide to go with. Unfortunately, not all motherboards are created equal, and in fact, some of the cheaper ones won't even reach those 3200 MHz scores or speeds that you would be expecting. And so definitely go take a look at the motherboard manufacturer's website and ensure that it can actually hit those speeds or those speeds are supported. Once again, this is a thing where somebody may say, yeah, this motherboard will support X speed memory, but in fact, you're not going to get any support from that company once that memory doesn't run at it because it wasn't stated on that motherboard manufacturer's website to be supported. So if you want the full experience, unfortunately, memory is just not where you're going to want to cut it short. And here's what I would suggest, which a lot of people might find a little odd. And that's instead of spending the extra money on that Ryzen 7 2700X and getting yourself some 2400 megahertz memory, I would highly recommend bumping yourself down to that 16 or 2700X and picking up some faster memory. You're going to have better day-to-day -day application experience because the single core will be improved significantly and you actually probably don't even need the 8 core 16 threads as much as you need that kind of good middle ground of high core count with 6 cores, 12 threads, and a pretty decent performing single thread. Now the memory speed in Infinity Fabric to clarify primarily has to do with the multi-threaded scores and things like Cinebench and Blender, and I realized that stating that the memory and those go together might cause some confusion, but because the processor is performing better over all the cores, then you're going to have a better experience adding two more cores on and going with some cheaper memory. The other thing I would like to point out here is that you should probably also consider, of course, hard drive speed. And I've seen this actually twice now in my inbox where I get a build with a 2700X and a single rank memory clocked at 2400 megahertz and a regular hard drive, a regular disk drive. And I'm sitting there going, ah, pulling my hair out because what he should have done is picked up a 1600 or a 2600 X if wanted and save that, use that extra money that he saved on getting some dual rank memory clocked at least at 2666 and of course a solid state drive that will improve once again that daily application experience that's going to be worth a ton more than those extra two cores and four threads on the more expensive processor. Another thing to note that a lot of people don't actually realize, and we're going to go into some more in-depth testing on this, is that 6 cores and 12 threads is going to be plenty even if you're wanting to stream to Twitch. That's going to even be at the H.264 encoding, which we'll have to go over later in another video, but it's safe to say that if you're running a 1600 or 2600, your streaming experience is not going to be significantly hindered compared to the 1800 or the 2700X. So keep all of that in mind. It's not near as important for those extra two cores than it is to make sure you have a balanced system. And by balanced system, I mean make sure you get some solid state storage at the very least. Move up to an NVMe if you can. I would even recommend personally, I would rather have a 1600 and an NVMe drive than a 2700X and a solid state drive just because of the applications that I utilize and how I go about my day-to-day -day work and what I've experienced with fast storage, it is equal to none. So all of those, that's a little rant. We're gonna go into testing later on some of the six core 12 thread in streaming to Twitch versus the eight core 16 thread streaming to Twitch. And even at the very least, you could always turn off if you're having issues in game with CPU performance, you could always turn off H.264 encoding and push it off to the GPU in most cases, both Relive as well as NVNC for NVIDIA and AMD, 
work wonderfully and even though there will be a little bit of pixelation to really get rid of that pixelation you're going to already need to move to a dual pc streaming setup or to something like a thread ripper of some sort at least in my experience and single pc streaming can always be problematic as it is just because of the way the hooks work for all of the lower level apis like directx 12 and vulcan directx 11 and so on hope that clears some stuff up and i hope it helped you guys picking out or building your new ryzen system and i hope i got to you before you went ahead and purchased that single rank memory go ahead make sure you do your research read the motherboard manuals go ahead and read that amd list and if you need any more help come check me out in the discord or over on my twitch channel while i'm streaming live i'm happy to answer any questions over there as well at twitch.tv slash underscore and i'll see you next tuesday